So what does the processor state look like after reset according to the manual? Well, you can go look it up and see all this and look at all of this nice information about the various register states and that's all good and well. What does it look like according to Simix? Well, you should have seen that, you know, most of these registers are initialized to zero, EDX being the parent exception. EIP is set to FFFF0 and EFLAGS is mostly zero as well. Now, the specific values are zeros in all of the registers except EDX. EDX will contain the information returned by the CPU ID instruction if you were to pass one for the parameter to it in EAX. What this is actually going to be is information from a feature table that you can look up in the CPU ID uh, instruction area of the manual. So that tells about, you know, different things. Does this particular processor support physical address extensions and conditional move instructions and a bunch of different feature extensions? That's so that the BIOS can know what is supported and what is not. Now, what's really interesting is what's going on with the segment registers and stuff like that. So you can see that most of the segment registers are set to zeros, but CS is set to F000. And IP, since this is a 16-bit execution mode, like although this says EAX, blah, 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 these are all actually, you know, when you're truly in 16-bit mode, it starts with, you know, AX, BX, CX, BP, etc. Although there is a instruction override that can allow 16-bit mode code to access 32-bit registers on systems that actually support 32 bits, not like the original processors. But anyways, IP is 16 bits and it's set to FFFF0. And CS and IP, so the full logical address, remember architecture 2001, logical addresses are a segment selector and a uh, regular register or a you know hard-coded value, 32-bit value, or in this case, a 16-bit value. So that is F FFF0. And why is it F FFF0 as opposed to F000 FFF0? Well, we'll talk about that in a little bit when we talk about the segmentation that you know from uh, 32 and 64 bit systems from architecture 2001. Segmentation actually works a bit different in the original 16 bit execution mode. And the other thing is E flags being set to 2 because there's just the bit 1 is always hard coded to 1 in modern systems. So looking at the segment register information, you can see some of the stuff we would expect from Architecture 2001, IDTR, the IDT base register, GDTR base register. And then we've got the ES, SS, FS, task register, etc. A whole bunch of segment stuff that should look familiar from Architecture 2001. But the really interesting thing about it is that Simix is actually exposing to us the stuff that we said was secret and hidden shadow register state from Architecture 2001. So we said the manuals may say segment registers have a visible part and a hidden part, where the hidden part includes base address limit access information. And then we, you know, talked about how in 64-bit mode, uh, because segmentation is not exactly used the same way in 64-bit as 32-bit, these, you know, hidden portions had hard-coded bases of 0 and hard-coded limits of 2 to the 64 minus 1. Now, that is actually being shown to us explicitly inside of Simix. So the shadow portion is this portion right here. The segment selector may be these 16 bits, but then here is the shadow portion that we don't normally have visibility into on a normal you know, debugger, a normal executing system. But because Simix is not a normal executing system, it's a simulator of how an Intel system should actually work, they just expose this information for us to easily see. Now, there's one particular bit in that is very interesting here, and that is the CS. So we said that's F000, but the base in particular is interesting. The reset state of the base, the secret hidden base portion of the CS register is actually set to FFFF000. So that means that when the base is added to an instruction pointer, you're going to be getting something in the FFF range. Why would the base be added to an instruction pointer? Because another little miscellaneous thing that was just thrown in there in Architecture 2001 was the implicit use of segment registers. So we said whenever an instruction is actually being executed by the processor, behind the scenes, it's always implicitly using the CS register. So we learned about explicit usage, but we also learned that there's implicit usage. So implicit stack usage, implicit data usage, and in this particular case, what we care about is the implicit code segment register usage. So it says all instruction fetches are secretly using the CS information behind the scenes to construct a logical address 
uh, for where it should be getting you know code from. So that means that when you're actually executing code at the reset vector, uh, the CS base is added to the EIP or IP in order to yield the actual location that's going to be accessed. So if the CS base is FFFF zeros at the beginning and EIP or IP is set to FFF zero, that means you're going to add them together and you're going to be getting FFF, FFF, F, one extra F, zero. So that's going to be that reset vector that we talked about. The reset vector on an x86 system is all Fs and a zero. So seven Fs and a zero, 64, uh, 32 gigs, sorry, four gigabytes minus 16 bytes. That is the location where the processor starts upon reset just by virtue of the fact that the initialized reset state of the hardware is this particular EIP, this particular CS base. So you might see some things when disassembling in 16-bit mode, showing it as F, FFF0, but that address is actually translating through to this because the problem is the disassembler doesn't know, doesn't account for the fact that the base address is actually this. So it's really just saying, well, you know, looks to me like 16-bit code would be this. And again, we'll talk a little bit more about why that's F and then FFF0 instead of F000, F000. Etc. It's because of the way 16-bit segmentation versus 32-bit works.